tattoo on his forehead of the letter of an Allah, uh, which eh, we're not going to worry too much about. <laughs> what? Locks and. Uh, I don't think that comes up in this one, but but I will. Okay. So the elephants are called font by the other races of the galaxy who are other uplifted animals, though they don't know they're uplifted animals, they are just who they are. Uh, and there are two species or two races of elephants, the lox and the elephant. And if you are a 21st century human, you might realize that this represents uh, Loxodonta africana and Elephus maximus. They don't know that either. This starts about 62,000 years in our future, and much has been forgotten. So, and speaking to the dead is called speaking. This is the start of chapter two, Possibilities and Myths. Joral had been speaking less than a year. He filled the resulting darkness with images from his own memory, imagining a familiar room in a house on the island of Kessler. The dimensions and materials, the colors and textures and scents formed around him. That easily, he sat in a small alcove that lay just off of the kitchen of the home maintained by his friend's widow. The walls were beach, yellow and bright in their own right, and polished to a high sheen. A hand braided rug covered the floor from the kitchen's threshold to the hidden door in the back wall that provided a less obvious entrance to the house. A tapestry woven of wildflowers hung on that wall, filling the air with a light, sweet fragrance. Two comfortably curved benches faced one another, set far back against opposite sides, such that their occupants would be unseen by anyone passing the opening. Joral saw it all in his mind, just as he had seen it before taking the cough and settling into that very spot after dinner. While his best friend's widow busied herself with after-dinner tasks, he muttered a name aloud, Arla, and began summoning particles, luring them with memories. Sitting in a classroom in his grandmother's hall, learning to cipher, sampling their first efforts at distillation, introducing him to Tolta, the daughter of a friend of his mother, laughing in the rain as they took a raft to Gerd for the first time, embracing him, trunks wrapped around one another's ears the day he left Farsa. When he had a sufficient number, he willed the particles to coalesce into his friend's form, occupying the bench opposite him, visible to anyone who possessed the speaker's gift. Your wife made the most amazing dinner tonight, said Joral, the mental construct of himself smacking his lips with satisfaction, while in the real world, his head pressed back against the wall, his trunk draping languidly down his chest, a trickle of drool starting at the corner of his placid mouth. Arlo smiled. It started with his eyes and spread with exaggerated slowness across his face until his ears gave a little flap of merriment. Did she? You say that like you're surprised. Told has always been a great cook. You know that. <clears throat> of regional dishes, sure. Of the safe and sane traditional meals that everyone's aunt knows how to make. I am talking about recipes from other worlds. Places where no font has been in centuries. Now you're just being foolish. No one is going to bother venturing into space just for dinner. Yep. Not even you. I didn't say we left Fars. Only that the recipes, the spices, were from our world. Pay attention. Or what? You'll banish me? Spread the glowing bits of me far and wide? I, I never, don't even joke about that. I'm dead, Joel. You can't tell me what to do. More importantly, you shouldn't be trying to tell me anything. This is, what, the 30th time you've summoned me? It's not healthy. I'm a speaker. It's a rare gift even on bars. Why shouldn't I use it? Just because a thing can be done doesn't mean it should be done. I'm not telling you not to use your gift. You're a historian. I imagine it must be a powerful tool in your work, talking directly to the people who made history. That's incredible. Do more of that. But you shouldn't keep talking to me. Let me go. Even a historian can't keep living in the past. 